Okay, okay, okay. Already. All right. We are live, but we got to let it breathe just for a moment because our Facebook's peeps, uh, they'd be a little bit bummed out if we got this party started without them. You know, we got to think about everybody. MHH is about the big tent. You know what I'm saying? And it looks like we're good. Welcome in, everybody. It is the Mile High Huddle podcast. I am your return host. Yes, I'm still alive. Chad Jensen with me, my fellow football priest, who's Musk. Uh, I have definitely missed for the last two and a half weeks. You know him, you love him, Zach Kelberman. Zach, bro, it's so good to see you. Uh, I've missed you. I've missed everybody in the chat. I've missed Scott. Thanks for holding it down, dude. How how was it the last couple of weeks? Well, I'm not dead like you. You know, we're still hanging in there, still ticking. Uh, I love podcasting with Scott, but it feels good, Chad. I will say to be on this side of the screen again and things to be back to normal. And fortunately, we have a lot to go over tonight in your return. Woo. Yeah, I mean... I don't know if we should look at it as like an auspicious like restart or some kind of sign or emblem. But in case you missed it, gang, the Denver Broncos officially bit the bullet. Uh, not really surprising anybody, but still, you know, it's like, are they going to really, Zach, eat that dead money on, on Russ? I mean, uh, but that's what's happened. So what's your gut reaction? The Broncos have informed Russell Wilson <laughs> that he will be released. He's going to be a free agent. What does it mean for the Broncos? What's your reaction? And like, let's just start with that. Well, this could be an obscure reference chat or for anybody else, but remember a year ago when uh, Rogers was traded to the Jets after so many months of it being talked about and the famous expressions of everyone on NFL Live, they all feign surprise because we all knew it was going to happen. So that's why it was feigning. I, we all knew Russell Wilson was going to get released. It was just a matter of when and not if. So I can't say I'm surprised. I can say I'm happy though that the Band-Aid, Scott and I talked about this last night, finally, Broncos country can rip that Band-Aid off. Finally, Broncos country can begin to heal in the post-Russ era, and then we can look forward to our next quarterback, whomever that may be. Yeah, I think a big part of the healing process is just getting clarity on the issue, right? right. Like, one of the bummer aspects of this offseason, like normally you guys hear us talk about it, like our favorite stretch on the NFL calendar covering the Broncos is always like January th through April because that's when you know you're you're getting the hirings the firings you're getting all the rumors free agent stuff uh, releases you're getting the draft rumors all that stuff we love that stuff but Zach this whole rust thing has kind of hung over Broncos country like a like a cloud and uh in more ways than one because it kind of has not only clouded fans outlook on on the team and kind of bummed them out and kind of made everybody feel like the Broncos are about to start from scratch at quarterback when just two years ago, everybody thought we finally have an answer post Peyton, but also clouding the future. Like what, what do I have to be excited about? Like, am I trying to get excited about Russell Wilson coming back for year two in the Sean Payton scheme? Or am I trying to get excited about, you know, the Broncos chasing a first rounder? Like now there's clarity and there is, uh, there's some relief in that. And not just for fans, the Broncos now move forward with full purpose. And I think it speaks volumes that they're choosing to eat a, a record-setting amount of dead money, Chad. $85 million spread over 2024 and 2025 in order to move on because he wasn't right for Sean Payton. And I can only speak for myself, but I am excited about who the next Broncos quarterback could be. Sean Payton uh, going through the scouting process, getting a chance to handpick his guy. And if he hits, the Broncos are in good hands, hopefully for the next decade. Let's, uh, let's see what's on y'all's mind here. David, who jumped in early number one tonight uh first super chat in appreciate you big dog thank you for the support you know it means a lot to us he says does david with russ gone and only six picks we can't afford to move up and give up future first round picks and with the raiders right behind us we have to keep an eye on them so what would you guys do uh zach what's your answer here for david well, Russell Wilson had no bearing of the Broncos being up, being able to move up if they wanted to. They can always trade future assets or players like PS2 if they really wanted. But in my mind, David, it's really a no-brainer. Stay at 12 and hope your quarterback is still on the board. That's the ideal scenario, whether that's 
again, Bo Nix or McCarthy or whoever, that's what I would do. And I've talked about this ad nauseum, the Raiders being right behind you, the Vikings being right in front of you. It's a precarious spot. But if your guys on the board, you can't afford to trade down for the sake of trading down. Right now, Chad, there's a whole uh, operation gets second round pick by any means movement in Broncos country. I don't agree with that. I, if if it the board breaks a certain way and it's a doomsday scenario, then yeah. But ideally, David, I'm staying at 12 and hoping McCarthy or Knicks or whoever's still there. Yeah. And, you know, <clears throat> the last two weeks uh, while I've been gone, <clears throat> pardon me, I've been 100%. It's one of the rare times in my life. This has only happened twice since I started Mile High Huddle 10 years ago that I'm like completely unplugged from the matrix, the Broncos matrix. Like I, I wasn't keeping up with the daily news. I wasn't keeping up with the combine, any of that stuff. So I'm kind of like fresh virgin ears and eyes on this situation. So I might not be fully up to speed, Zach, on some of the rumors and the latest, but honestly, the two two weeks that I've been gone has done nothing to change my overall outlook on this, which is do what you got to do, whatever it takes to find your franchise quarterback of the future and not just find him, but get him like secure him. And, you know, people say, oh, we only have six picks and this and that. We don't have enough to trade up. And, and I don't know, man, it's, it's really, it's a fluid thing uh, to kind of try and get my mind reoriented on, on business at hand here. Zach, I listened to uh, Scott and Nick this morning on Broncos for breakfast. And, you know, some of the quarterback uh, takeaways coming out of the combine and whatnot, this might not necessarily be a one, two, three quarterback thing in the draft, like right out of the gates. Uh, my only point on this is that by the time you get to number 12, the Broncos may not need uh, to move up, but if there is an opportunity, I think they, they absolutely will. And if they do Zach and they have to trade a few things to do it, if it, you get your guy, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hating on that. I'm David, I want to grab David really quickly because I want to attack on one thing that you said, Chad. David McElrath, the Papa Bear, $5 super. Thank you so much, David. Great to see you tonight. Good evening, Broncos country, Chad. No question mark necessary tonight, Chad, is back. Is Zach Dillon and Deacon Scott. Hashtag so many quarterbacks. Which one? Hashtag Buckham times three. MHH for life. Denver Broncos for life. Thank you so much, David. And one thing about trading up, Chad, to uh, David Youngkin's last uh, super chat. There's a difference in my mind between trading up to one, two, or three, or two or three, let's be realistic, versus trading up to eight or nine. And why I say nine, the Bears hold that pick. They take Caleb at one. They probably want to move down. Lance Zerline actually had his new mock come out today and had the Broncos moving up to nine from 12 for McCarthy. Another possibility is moving up to eight with the Atlanta Falcons. The latest rumor I heard is that Kirk Cousins is preparing to move his family to Atlanta. That would take the Falcons obviously out of the quarterback market and give the Broncos uh, a trade landing spot if they choose to come up. Point, the point I'm making here is there's a big difference between moving up in the sense of one, two, or three versus moving up to eight or nine. One would cost the Broncos a lot less in the long run. They got to do whatever it takes. <clears throat> and David, thank you for getting in early, my dog. Uh, it's good to see you again. And uh, I've missed every one of you. Uh, and that is no lie. Trust me on that. Uh, we got the Sam Bam in the house, a legendary mythical figure in our community, rocking his, his jersey. Much love and respect, my friend. He says, welcome back, Chad. Thank you, my dog. Well, the ride is over. I'll never forget how happy I was two years ago when I heard the news of the Russ trade. Let's just hope that the next intended to be franchise quarterback. I love your qualifier there, Sam. Uh, puts an end to this carousel. Go Broncos. Yeah, I mean, I think they're gonna they're gonna do it the old fashioned way. Or at least they're gonna try. But who knows? You know, we've been wrong before on some of our predictions, Zach, and it wouldn't completely stun me if, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, the Broncos ended up like. You know, even though they're at 12, they're they're within striking distance. Like, I'm not sure they'll get a better opportunity in the early days of the Sean Payton era to get in position for a, for a rookie quarterback. But maybe they convince themselves or, you know, they're talking on the phone and the, the rumor mill that they've participated in at the combine deduces. Uh, yeah, the guys we like just aren't going to be there. So let's go ahead and sign somebody that could be an option like they could do that. Wouldn't shock me. But I feel pretty solid in my gut, Zach, this time around with Sean Payton there to kind of identify the right guy, they're going to try to do it the old-fashioned way and, and get a quarterback that hopefully isn't just the intended-to-be franchise quarterback, but the guy.
Ding, ding, ding. That's what I was going to say. They uh, Point well taken, Sam, 100%, but they don't need just the intention or the hopeful or whatever. They need the understood. You know, word to Joe Flacco, the understood franchise, franchise quarterback in Denver. That's what they need to finally get off this ride. And we have to just keep it in Sean Payton's hands. He was busy and locked in, I've heard, at the Combine, Chad. He is not going to sit idly by. He is not going to sit on his hands. If he wants his guy, he is going to move up for his guy. And to me, that's pretty thrilling after the last eight years of mostly retreads. Well, it's, it's like he said, the day he confirmed the news that Russell Wilson was benched, he's like, look, <clears throat> you know, and justifying that it was a football move. Like if I, this is a move I feel like we need to make. And if it, if I don't make this move could be somebody else standing up here talking to you uh, in the not too distant future. So he feels that urgency. He knows that in order for him to make anything of his uh, tenure as Broncos head coach, He's stuck in the mud, stuck in neutral without his guy. Kathy uh, in Deutschland, in Germany. <clears throat> so good to see you. Pardon me. Um, <clears throat> she says, Chad, hey, uh, Chad, hey, y'all. About time Wilson is gone. Yeah, I mean, we've all saw, seen it coming, <clears throat> Kathy. So uh, thank you very much for the for the love and support. Hope you're doing well. We've got the ronk in the house. Been a long time. I've missed you, Mike. Hope you're doing well, big dog. Uh, he says, uh, good evening, Chad and Zach on the MHH podcast, gut reaction of the news of Russell Wilson, go Broncos. Yeah. How are you guys feeling? You got to let us know <clears throat> in the chat because it's a, it's now a new era officially Zach. And then we'll grab rock chalk. Yeah. I'm just smiling to myself because I can't believe we're here less than two full calendar years after the Broncos traded for Russell Wilson. They're now releasing Russell Wilson. And you talked about a second ago, how many times we've gotten things wrong. I definitely got Russell Wilson wrong and Hackett for that matter. But, you know, Seahawks fans have been reminding me steadily on Twitter today about the disaster that was the Russ experiment. And I just I don't want to be on the carousel for much longer, Chad. That's all I can say. We're always going to wonder, or at least I'll, I'll speak for myself on this. I'm always going to wonder, kind of like with some of the Drew Locke stuff of the past. I'm always going to wonder, like, hey, what what would it have been if Russ doesn't land in Denver year one with, you know, Nathaniel Hackett as his head coach or whatever? But, you know unless you're living in a foot, uh, a, a, a different football universe, an alternate football universe, we're never going to know the answer to that. What we know is that it was a colossal swing and a miss and uh, set the Broncos back at least a couple of years. Uh, Rock chalk, much love and respect. Thank you so much for the super chat, helping us keep the lights on here at MHH and uh, someone who's been with us a long time talking Broncos here on these live streams says, does uh, rock chalk, Thank goodness the wait is over. Now the Broncos can move forward from Russell Wilson and put that colossal mistake in the rear view. Uh, time now to create cap space and find a new QB1. Welcome back, Chad. Thank you very much. MHH for life, Denver Broncos for life. Yeah, like I said, I mean, it's that cloud, Zach, that's kind of hung over all of Broncos country, looming, right? Just kind of get it over with, man. Rip that Band-Aid off, uh, Zach. But I'm going to ask you, because again, I've been kind of unplugged today in fact this podcast is the beginning of me getting reintegrated into things and catching up is it in fact a june pre-june first cut so they're going to eat the 85 million i don't think it was specified yet i think they will specify that on march 13th when he is formally released i'd be surprised if it wasn't chad but but based on everything i've heard they have two ways they can swallow the cap pit they're going to have to eat 85 million it's just a matter of eating more of this year or more next year yeah, so over the cap, God bless him, Jason Fitzgerald and his crew. $85 million, if if it's a pre-June 1st cut designation uh, on Russ, if that's what it was, $85 million dead this year, 49.6, we'll call it $50 million dead next year. The year after, 31.2 dead. The year after that, 12 dead, then four dead, and then it's kind of over with. As a post-June 1st, designation it's still brutal uh but not fully like the record because scott wasn't uh ryan like 40 right he was right at 40 43 and then and then yeah so it wouldn't tech if, if it's a post june 1st wouldn't quite be at the record level but if it's a pre-june 1st zach we're talking more than we're basically doubling the record single biggest dead cap hit for a player in NFL history. And 
I don't know how you survive with 85 dead, Zach, on a, on a salary cap, even with the NFL, uh, you know, really going, going harder than anyone expected on raising the salary cap this year. The only way to do it is hit on your draft picks and have cheap cost controlled players at key positions. That's why getting quarterback is so mandatory and, and so crucial to the Broncos long-term hopes. But we all knew about the 85 million dead. Uh-huh. We, don't, we don't know how the Broncos or not much has been talked about the Broncos, how they're going to create cap space. I saw Mike Kliss say that there's going to be a lot of restructures, um, possible extensions, trades, releases, a lot of house cleaning uh, this week. And it could be very high price players. Chad are, um, I don't know. What's the word I'm looking Shown for? Shown the door. <laughs> yeah, they're right. Sacrifice. That's the word yeah. I'm looking for in order for Sacrifice. the Broncos to get, to get healthy again. Sacrificed on the altar of salary yeah. cap health and, and well-being and there homeostasis. We Scott, thank you for clarifying here. The record on Matt Ryan was a f- total of 43 million, not a one year hit, but like a total dead cap hit of 43 million. So this will be regardless a record. Uh, even if the Broncos ended up designating him a post June 1st cut, which I'm not going to lie to you, Zach, and in the audience here, I don't know exactly what stipulations rules there are in place. Like can, can a team just at any point on the NFL calendar before uh, June 1st designate a player as a post June 1st, or does it have to be like within a certain window? I'm not sure on that. Um, I'm, I'm sure our guy, our cap guy, Bob Morris would know, but either way, it is, in fact, a record. And the biggest thing, too, is like, dang, dude, they're, they're, this whole thing blowing up on him. And he hasn't even started year one of the right. actual extension yeah. that he signed as a Bronco. I'm going to assume that once you designate something that you can't, you know, reverse it or you have when you make the, the uh, transaction official, you have to designate it then. But we'll see what happens with that. Regardless, though, Chad, if they can, I'd rather the Broncos eat more this year because it's going to be probably some sort of rebuilding year and have more money to work with in 2025 when the Russ contract is kind of off the books a little bit. George, my dog, so good to see you. Appreciate you. Says Chad, glad to have you back. Scott did great as always. It's nice to get all your thoughts on the team. Denver Bronx for life, MHH for life. Thank you, George. Yeah, when I'm when I'm uh, unavailable, I I never have any doubts that Scott can hold it down. I mean, he's an OG. He's the man. Um, but yeah, so let's see. Let me let me sift here through some of the uh, reactions here. Um, Zach, I want to ask you as I do though. Like again, me being kind of out of things for a couple of weeks. My biggest lament is that I wasn't available for the combine. Right? What were some of the takeaways for you from how things shook out with the quarterbacks what it may have changed etc uh, at the combine specific to quarterback well it's tough because not all of them went through the full gamut of drills so you can only really go through the whiteboard stuff and interview stuff but um everything i've heard was that the broncos spent a lot of time with the top five or six quarterbacks they like most teams were impressed with jj mccarthy they put michael Penix through an intentionally bad interview where sean payton pulled up his negative plays and kind of quizzed him on that so they definitely did their homework and one thing i noticed they had you know they have their set amount of interviews and visits they can have at the combine a majority of those, except for quarterback, were offensive linemen. And as Scott and I were talking about the last few pods, if they don't go quarterback at 12, offensive line could be an area where they look to uh, bolster. Indeed. Um, let's grab this from a uh, Twitch man here. We always like to get at least one one Twitch on every stream. Appreciate you being with us. JB1789. All the pressure, says JB, is on Sean Payton to truly find a long-lasting franchise quarterback. If not, he could be on the hot seat in a few years. Yeah, definitely the pressure is on because, look, it, it, is, is there anyone that, that may, then perhaps maybe a Jim Harbaugh, but even Jim, is there anybody besides Sean Hayton that would have the cashews to make a move like this? Like, let's say the Broncos don't hire Sean Payton last year and they hired Dan Quinn. Russell Wilson's probably not going anywhere. Like this is a move yeah. that is spearheaded by Sean Payton, not just because he's got the hubris, Zach, but you know, he he has the actual wherewithal to resolve the issue, meaning help identify the right guy to succeed uh Russell Wilson, whether it's in free agency or the draft, etc. But it does create a heck of a lot of pressure on him. And it makes you wonder, like, you know, we've talked about this coming out of his first year. There's no doubt Sean Payton moved the needle for the Broncos in year one. 
but he did kind of use up whatever grace and kind of honeymoon, um, you know, period action Broncos country was will and the media were willing to give him by making the move that he did with Russ, benching him the way he did, controversial nature of it, kind of the blowback. So now he adds to that with the actual release of Russ, pressure's on. 100%, yeah. I mean, he's slowly removing the scapegoats from around him. I think next would be VJ, but this is something I appreciate about Sean Payton being this aggressive and being this hands-on. The 85 million dead sucks. The 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 fail the fact that it's a failed experiment sucks. But the fact that Sean Payton ripped the band-aid off now, did not drag it out, did not wait, is cutting things uh off early rather than too late, I think is important. And I appreciate that from the from the coach. And, and honestly, it might sound like cold comfort if you are Russell Wilson, but the timing of it is also somewhat of a kindness. I mean, I'm sure there is some kind of incentive for the Broncos to do it now when you know, etc. However, it is a kindness to Russ. It is a semi like acknowledging his, you know, uh, resume and the respect the team does have for him, even though it didn't work out, allowing him to be probably the one of the well, one of the top two or three highest pursued quarterbacks in this free agent class. So there's there's that too. draft time. My dog, what's going on? It says finally, the stitches have come out. Now it's time to let the gaping wound heal. Well, the problem is. You know, yeah, the stitches may have come out, uh, the wound's still there, and it's not going to heal until the Broncos actually get a permanent quarterback, and that whole thing is solved. So, I don't know, maybe the first, uh, maybe the, you know, the dissolvable, I don't want to be gross, you know, those dis the stitches that dissolve or whatever, and then sometimes the deeper ones, top ones dissolve, but there's the other ones. I think that's more the sitch here at draft time. Yeah, I was going to say, if we're using this analogy, I mean, next would come like just a crap ton of Neosporin and peroxide to make sure that gaping wound does not get infected. And then we'll slowly clean it and bandage it and it'll get better. It's going to take some time, draft time, but we're getting there slowly but surely. Thank God. Who, who is going to be the penicillin for the Denver Broncos <laughs> this year? You know, we're going to get to the bottom of it, but uh, draft time. Appreciate you, my friend. Uh, we also have from the tippity top rope on Facebook, Howie frickin' day in the frickin' house. Dropping some big boy freaking stars, and we love it. We Thank appreciate you, you, Howie. Thank you, my friend. He says, evening, gents. With Russ gone, is Bo Nix of Oregon the most likely guy after J.J.'s con uh, McCarthy's combine performance moving him up into the top five? Uh, Zach, let's start with you answering this one because I want to hear your thoughts on, on the J.J. kind of after the, the aftermath of the combine, what it means for JJ and then answer the question. Well, nothing JJ did during the combine hurt his standing in Sean Payton's eyes. I think if anything, it helped. And uh, if anything, he he's going to work himself up to out of the Broncos range, maybe a top 10 pick. I, I've no doubt that it's tough. It's tough to say though, Chad, without being there, being in the room, being privy to this information, but everything I've heard is that Payton loved JJ. And I would agree that Nick's, would likely be the plan B if JJ's off the board. Both are great processors. Both can play in structure. I think JJ has a higher NFL ceiling, but Nix has a higher year one floor. And either, I think, could make a chicken salad with Sean Payton. Howie, seriously, though, my friend, thank you so much. That is uh, very, very generous of you, and it goes a long way. So thank you, my friend. Um, but, you know, hey, we've talked about it many times, how – on the surface or from the outside looking in, it seems that Bo Nix would be a very good fit for, for the kind of scheme Sean Payton uh, deployed all those years in New Orleans, but that's from the outside looking in. We don't necessarily know how Sean Payton views Bo Nix, uh, especially in the context of the other quarterbacks that may be within arm's reach of the Broncos. Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Ray, what's going on, big dog? Thank you for the super chat. Really appreciate you. Welcome. He says, good evening, Chad and Zach, Broncos country. Well, nowhere to go but up, right? Yeah, I mean, Zach, you can't go into 2024 with Jarrett Stidham as your understood starter. I mean, I have a lot of faith in Sean Payton still as a head coach and, and his wherewithal, what he can do for the Broncos. But, you know, Th those final two games, it did somewhat put a, a little bit of a of a you know a wet blanket on 
my perception of, oh, Sean Payton can just throw like any average stopgap in there and they're going to go out and, and crush. Um, those dreams have, have been shattered. So like Jarrett Stidham, that can't be your number one option. So, you know, the Broncos got to, they got to come up with some answers and they will. I agree that you can't really go down after the last eight years in the post Russ mm -hmm. era, but there's a way to go laterally. There's a way to stay in neutral in my opinion. And that would be to sign a Garoppolo or sign a Darnold or trade for a Trey Lance or, or whatever. So, Ronnie, I hope the Broncos don't go that way. I think it was uh, Ian Rappaport talking today that Stidham will get the first crack to be the Broncos' week one quarterback, and he mentioned maybe like a Jacoby Brissett coming in as a uh, competition. It's just spinning your wheels, and I prefer the Broncos take a bigger swing in the drafted quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's one slight caveat to my – you know, low outlook if Jarrett Stidham was the QB1 going into 2024. And that is, hey, if that were the case, Zach, that would ostensibly mean that the Broncos use those six picks this year to really restock the shelves. And if they hit on those picks and they were at the, the positions that we all know uh, are really hurting the Broncos right now, maybe it would look a lot more like Sean Payton making hay, you know, with a Teddy Bridgewater or a Jameis Winston or something like that. But I, I have my doubts. Keisho uh, Gookie TV, what's up? So good to see you. Also, an OG, been with us a long, long time. Really appreciate the support, my friend. He says, we need to build our homegrown quarterback. The reason we can't do retreads is because you can't build a true contender by doing that. Elite organizations build in the draft. If you can't draft, you're stuck until you fix it. You know, a broadcaster who I uh, have a lot of respect for, Used to do a lot in Denver, obviously, with the fan. He's a Colorado OG, went to CU, played for the Broncos, Mike Pritchard. He has a famous saying that you guys have heard me, uh, those of you have been with us a long time, you've heard me say this. This is where I got it, Mike Pritchard, shout out. Uh, there is no such thing, Zach, as a free agent franchise quarterback. And if that's the rule, which I agree with him, that's the rule, every rule is going to have its exception. Peyton Manning was an exception to that rule because he's like literally a top three all-time quarterback. He was an exception. Tom Brady was an exception. Um, it happens once in a blue moon. But as a general rule of thumb, and you can hang your hat on this rule, you don't find franchise quarterbacks in free agency. You got to do it the old-fashioned way, as, as Shoguki's saying here. You got to go out and draft one. And the Broncos have never successfully – I mean, you, you – there's an argument to be made in terms of definitions on what I'm about to say here relative to Jay Cutler, but the Broncos have never drafted and developed a first round quarterback or, or any quarterback for that matter that has gone on to be their guy. John Elway technically is not right because he was, he was, he wasn't actually a Broncos pick. He was drafted by the Colts. Although I still would argue on that one too, that, well, Hey, yeah, maybe the Broncos didn't draft them themselves. They would have, if they would have had that pick, and it was them who developed John Elway. So, like, we're we're splitting hairs. Or as my dad, uh, as, as Mark would say, Mark Jensen, shout out pops. He would say, you know, you're picking uh, you're picking that crap out of pepper here. So we're we're, we're splitting hairs. But I digress a little bit here. You got to go back to the well, Zach. You got to try and do it the old fashioned way. Yeah, I never understood the the perception that just because you you failed with Locke or Osweiler or Lynch that you shouldn't try again. The, the barometer is Patrick Mahomes, and you have to have a quarterback that can at least go toe to toe, if not, you know, hopefully beat Patrick Mahomes. And Sam Darnold is not going to do that. Jared Stidham's not going to do that. Trey Lance, Jimmy Garoppolo, et cetera, they're not going to do that. And, and every major quarterback that has gone toe to toe, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, et cetera, Josh Allen, they were drafted and developed. They came from college to their NFL team and they stayed there and they progressed into what they are now. That's what the Broncos have to do. They have to find the right guy. In exact science, harder to say than it is to do, but they have to find their guy in the draft, get it right, and just be set for the next decade. Amen. Phil, down in Tucson, one of the great members of our community who proves every single day that Broncos country is not a geographic location. It is, in fact, a state of being. Love you, Phil. He says, good evening, Chad, Zach, and Deacon Scott. Welcome back, Chad. Thank you, brother. He says, well, Russ is gone, so are we back on the quarterback carousel again? Yes, we are. Let's all say a prayer that Sean Payton gets this right. Hashtag Buckham, MHH for life, Broncos for life. Thank you, Phil. And yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Prayers up, you know, got to get it right here. And again, you know, when we talk about having an eye for quarterbacks or an understanding at the very least from a coaching level of the traits and tools and like the combination of traits and tools that you're going to need to succeed a quarterback. Sean Payton's a big asset in that pursuit, but it's kind of weird because he's a guy that's actually knows what, what it's like to coach a guy and mold a guy and, and develop a guy and bring him along. John Elway, it's kind of counterintuitive, Zach, because here he is, one of the most accomplished quarterbacks in NFL history, right? A, a Hall of Famer quarterback for the life of him. Could not figure out how to identify a quarterback in the draft. You know, it was really, really bizarre. Uh, but in, you know, his case, Zach, he never had to really coach one. He never was out there on the field starting from square one and and, and developing them around the, the curve there, the developmental curve. Sean Payton has done that, you know, and, and maybe Breeze, Drew Breeze, Zach was a little bit more, a little bit closer, I'll say, of a finished product when when Sean Payton got him in New Orleans in 2006. But, I mean, look, he had one very prolific year in San Diego, you know, pre-New Orleans, did Drew Breeze. A Pro Bowl year, won 11 ball games, if memory serves. But, like, he was kind of, at that point, I would compare him to, I'll date myself a little bit here, but I would compare him to, like, in terms of, like, let's say, we'll say career cachet, right, or profile, kind of viewed as like a Ryan Tannehill about the time the Tennessee Titans got Ryan Tannehill. Maybe a little bit more bloom on that rose than Tannehill as a failed first-rounder in Miami, but kind of like that, and then he gets in New Orleans. No one, Zach, could have predicted that he would go on to be like one of the top two or three most prolific passers in NFL history, Sean Payton deserves a lot of credit for that. A lot of credit. So I trust him on, on this pursuit of finding the Broncos guy. Coaching, coaching, coaching. And yeah, I'll, I'll be saying a prayer that they get it right because it could set them up for the next decade. But even if they get it wrong, if they take the next Bryce Young and it looks like he's going to bust, just draft a quarterback next year. Keep drafting quarterbacks until you find your guy. And I have a feeling that Sean Payton's going to do just that, Chad. Yeah, that's, I mean, kind of painted themselves into a corner here, telegraphing to the world that that's, that's what's on uh, the menu. So make some hay, baby. Noah72 jumping in. Appreciate the super chat, my friend. Says, take the cap hit all at once. Start the rebuild. Man. And, well, first of all, I don't think they can take it all at once. Can they, Scott? Could they take, like, if it is a pre-June, could they take upwards of $170 million? I mean, you couldn't and still fill the team. But let's just say, Zach, it's uh, the worst case scenario and it's 85 million dead this year. It goes back to what you said. Like, it makes identifying a quarterback in the draft even more penultimate. Yeah. And something you said is my answer to this. I mean, you could. I don't know if you even can, but you still have to field a team this season. You have to be able to have some flexibility, even if you don't think you're going to you know, win a championship. So I think they're still going to split it and preferably take more up front so they can be in better position in 2025. Noah, thank you for the super chat, my friend. Um, yeah, I mean, let's take a look here. Your Denver Broncos, uh, just as like a refresher, this is as much for, for my edification as it is everybody else. I mean, there's still $20 million over the cap, Zach. There's still $20 million over. They got some moves to make. Um, you know, they got the the the, the changes and uh, maybe uh, saying the bloodbath has yet to truly arrive would be a little a tad much, but there's going to be some shakeups and it's not going to be painless. It's going to hurt. Some fans are going to get pissed off about how some of these things shake out. Or if it doesn't turn out that way, Zach, I'll be very surprised. Yeah, I mean, some players are going to be affected by this. Like a, a Simmons, for example, a Garrett Bowles. DJ Jones probably going to be cut. Tim Patrick's probably going to be cut. They could trade Jerry Judy. They might dangle Cortland Sutton. They're gonna, there's going to be some ramifications, Chad, to being in this dire financial street. We got Lawrence Rivera jumping in on uh, Facebook. Thank you, big dog, for the stars. He says, what about James Cahoon? He's been highly sought after by the Colts, and we know the Colts' history with quarterbacks. Um, yeah, I mean, they got real lucky. They got real lucky in, with Peyton Manning. They got real lucky with Andrew Luck, and I guess technically they did draft John Elway. So they have – they yeah, they've got some cachet in, in that department. But uh, this cat 
what who he's talking about. He was the Division Three Player of the Year. All right, uh, from what was it, Scott Bridgewater, uh, B- Bridgewater State, if something like that. I'm already out. Um, you know, he's a fringe guy. He's a guy that you know he's going to have to uh, battle his way into the NFL. We're talking about six foot four, two hundred fifteen pound quarterback. Um, level of competition, all those concerns, etc. Um, and I mean, does this completely stun you, Zach? Does this do these numbers blow you away? Twenty three hundred passing yards in uh, ten games and eighteen touchdowns. Like, who knows? Maybe he's the 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 next great undrafted quarterback. But you know, I don't see Tony Romo in him. Uh, but hey, you never know. I mean, if he wants to battle Ben DiNucci for a practice squad spot, I'd be happy to have James Cahoon, who just, you know, he sounds like a cartoon noise already. But um, uh, if he's not going to be a starter or not going to be in the competition to start, I don't want him. RD, north of the 49th parallel, another hashtag state of being member of our community. Much love and respect, my friend up there in Canada. He says, if no one accepts offers to trade up, and four quarterbacks are gone when we are picking. What do you want us to do? Reach for QB5, give up and try next year, roll with Stidham? Yeah, so it's the catch-22, right? You're between the rock and the hard place. What do you do there, Zach? So if no one accepts the offer to trade up and four quarterbacks are gone when we are picking, what do you want us to do? Reach for the QB5? It depends who the QB5 is. Is It it depends who the you know the four off the board are. I, I think Stidham is going to be the placeholder regardless. They're probably not going to throw a first-round quarterback into the fire, except maybe if it's you know Caleb Williams. So it comes down to do you go for a retread, do you go for a Darnold, or do you go for the QB5? And in my opinion, and I know it's maybe a little unpopular, I go for the QB5. Give me the unknown. Give me the upside. Give me what could be instead of what we know already is. Fully. Um, I don't know. I just... I'm, I'm, I, I'm a little out of the loop on just how some of the quarterback stock questions have taken shape relative to the combine and whatnot. By the time we uh well today's monday so yeah so by the time i'm sitting here in front of you guys again thursday i'll have a much more solid answer here um but i'll tell you for now you just do what you got to do to to get that quarterback and uh i still think champagne could make hay with a bo nix or a michael Penix, but i i don't know that it'll come to that i don't necessarily think the board's going to shake out that way but time will tell GLP in the house, Gary, uh, legendary mythical Mount Rushmore, super chat, superstar checking in. Thank you, my friend. Uh, he says, welcome back, Chad. Appreciate you. Yo, Zach and Scott, I assume it won't be long, says Gary, before we say goodbye to George Payton, unless Sean saves him. Go Broncos. Zach, this was a question everybody had about this time last year on the heels of the Payton hire. Hey, are we going to see what, you know, like a, a, a recapitulation of, what was it, circa 2013? It was the year after. It kind of lines up that way, but it was, I think, the year after Elway. No, it was 12. Either way, it was the year after John Elway took over as the top football executive in Denver. After the draft, not before, after the all the work on the draft had been done, Broncos fired their GM, Brian Zanders, and then John Elway took that role, you know, took the title. So he was vice president of football operations at the time and now general manager. So a lot of people thought, well, is that what's going to happen year one with the Peyton Peyton regime? It did not happen. Do you see it happen in Zach in year two? I was going to make the same point that usually it happens after the draft. So in, in late April, early May, if George Payton still has a job, that's that's a good sign for him. I kind of also have a feeling, Chad, that if Sean Payton could get one of his guys whether it's uh, if Mickey Loomis was available, uh, for example, he'd probably already be the Broncos general manager or Jeff Ireland, someone that he already knows. They're going to probably try to make it work. I wouldn't be surprised if George got another year as GM. I also wouldn't be surprised if he is truly, uh, if, if Peyton, uh, Sean Payton consolidates more power and kind of reduces George Payton to a figurehead, more so than he already is. I don't think, I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, again, I've been wrong before, but I don't think it's going to happen because 
another sign here is of of the the move to not only bench Russ but then release him to such a financial detriment to the team. One of the implications there, Zach, is that ownership loves them some Sean Payton. Sean Payton is operating under the full blessing and and faith of the Walton Penner uh, ownership group, which means that, you know, unless he really, Zach, had some kind of a, you know, workflow conflict with, with George Payton or they just really weren't getting along and they weren't sharing a brain, they don't see things the same way, et cetera, why do you need to to move on from from George Payton? George Payton, look, he made a move for Russ. That's that's the big you know stain on his resume. But it's a move that literally every GM that was in need of a quarterback who would have had the opportunity to do what George Payton did would have done. There is no GM outside of maybe Schneider himself in Seattle who had the more inside baseball look on Russell Wilson that faulted George Payton for making that move. I guess the other stain is the the uh, Nathaniel Hackett hire, but you know, from a personnel perspective, no GM bats a thousand, Zach. And uh, I think in fairness, tr- literally is trying to be as objective as possible. I think George Payton has more hits uh, than does like complete misses, whether it's draft or free agency. And he is a guy that was long coveted around the NFL. I mean, he was a guy turning down offers on the reg for years in Minnesota uh, to go take this job, that job. He stuck, and then he finally took the Broncos job. So it's not like he's just some schmuck or schlub. Like, he knows what he's doing. There's a reason why, Zach, he was a, a coveted front office guy. Yeah, I want to get to James, James in one second, but the best ability that George Payton has right now, Chad, it's not – Uh, scouting or negotiating contracts it's taking arrows because in the wake of the russell wilson release you know who's not getting blamed for all this sean payton you know who is george payton for trading for him the extension for hiring hackett some of the other personnel moves so as long as george payton is around that shields sean from a lot of the criticism that he would otherwise get if george wasn't here but we have james edwards sounds like a newer name welcome if so twenty dollar super Love the chat. James says, what do we do if we can't get QB1 this year? Would picking a cornerback 1A to Sertan be a good idea? Or do you think offensive line and defensive line would be the best choice? Cheers from the Caribbean, brother. So good to see you, James. Thank you for hopping in hopping in from the beautiful Caribbean. Uh, Chad, Scott and I talked about this ad nauseum. I, cornerback in the first round, CB, not QB. That would be like my fifth on a list of five preferences. I would definitely go if quarterback is not there. A tackle, a center, eh, or a defensive lineman, defensive end, defensive tackle. They need help in the trenches. That is crucial. Yeah. James, I I recognize James. It's been a minute since we've seen James on Super Chat, but James goes back a little ways with us, and we love seeing you, big dog, as Zach said, and thank you for the, the support. I'm on the train, Zach, of if no quarterback in round one, and assuming they make a pick there, they don't like trade back or trade out. Uh, I'm on the tackle or edge rusher train or bust. Like, I mean, it, hey, would it be nice to pair Sertan up with another like high level corner? Yeah, but at the expense of what? You know, you look at your edge rusher group, for example. I mean, you and Scott have, have as you mentioned, talked a lot about the the O line and whatnot. But and this applies to D line, um, but. uh, you look at what the Broncos have, and it's three guys that are just kind of these uh, young, energetic balls of potential, not so much production. It's nothing that you can really count on. It was nice to see Benito take a step forward. Baron Browning, when he's healthy, and that's obviously now been become a, a big concern for him as a pro, uh, he's, a, he's a solid number two. They're lacking a bona fide number one. They're lacking that Batman. They have, you know, a Robin and I'm not a a superheroes guy. So, you know, name sidekick B and C they need that number one guy. And depending on what happens with Garrett Bowles, um, you need a tackle. So that's, that, that still would be my first move. Hey, everyone talks about the no fly zone, how dominant they were in SB 50, but that again, I've said this before that secondary wouldn't have been so dominant. They wouldn't have had that nickname if it wasn't for the pass rush up front and the Broncos were lacking in that department, Chad, big time. 
totally true. It's it's one of the most I mean, football, one of the beautiful aspects of football is just the symbiotic nature of the whole thing. Right. You've got 11 guys on defense kind of running a play slash reacting to the real time information that's being served to them once the ball is snapped. Same goes for on offense. But there maybe isn't on defense anyway, a more symbiotic uh, relationship between positions than that of pass rushers and defensive backs. So um, if you have no pass rush, does it help to have good cover guys? It's a, it's the only thing that's going to save your behind. But when you can have a, a, a bona fide pass rush, you don't need to have Von Miller and DeMarcus Ware. You, I mean, you don't need to have Hall of Famers at both positions and, you know, future sack champions as your number three, you know, Shaq Barrett. You don't need to have that to be competent and effective, but you at least need a number one, Zach. Yeah, and I love Baron Browning. He's not a number one. I love Jonathan Cooper. He's not even a number two, maybe not even a number three. They just need that guy, that dog there, that blue chipper. So if they don't go corner or quarterback, that's why corner is low on my list of uh, preferences. Naj, my dog. You know what? In the morning, if when I need to kind of wake up and, and get some clarity and some energy, I could pour myself a cup of coffee. Or I could call Naj on the and just talk to him on the phone for like two minutes. Okay, thanks, bro. Bye. And I'm like wide awake and ready to totally kick this day's butt. That's what Naj brings to the table. Love you, big dog. And we I've missed you. You know these October meetings we have with the with the MHH meet and greet. They're 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 too far, uh, too few and far between. So looking forward to the next one, big dog. He says, Hey, brothers, it's a crapshoot. As much as these guys are experts i think we just need a lot of luck i just hope they don't toss away more future first trying to make up for this debacle a lot of truth to that dude the draft especially is a crap shoot and you can bolster your odds you know you can you can kind of hedge and whatnot but once you turn in that card there is an element of chance there is an element of luck and zach there is no position that that applies to more perfectly than quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I think this is what I talked about earlier. There's a big difference when you're talking about trading up, of trading up from 12 to 3, as an example, versus trading up from 12 to 9 or 8. And if you want to move to 9 or 8, Naj, I think you can get away with that. It won't be easy, but I think you can get away with that without surrendering a future first-round pick. And I would prefer to stay at 12 and not give up any more assets. The Broncos have done quite a lot of that the last couple of years. But if Sean Payton is convinced, if it's McCarthy, for example, and you have to move up to get him, and if it's a second and third round pick, for example, I am cutting that deal. I am making that trade. Holy crap. I just looked at the clock here. We're 47 minutes in, 48 uh, to this stream, and uh, time flies. So burning topics, questions, get them in the chat. We'll do our best to get to them. Um, but, uh, David, my brother jumping in with his second super chat tonight, much love and respect says the AFC has game changers, not game managers. And Denver has to get that game changer to compete with them. No doubt about it, dude. And that's what a true franchise quarterback is, right? Changes the game for you. Um, it's slightly ironic that the way that, that the, the, the term game managers is perceived also happens to be one of the key prerequisites for a quarterback to be a game changer. They have to be an elite game manager. Like you look at Patrick Mahomes, and of course, you know, we all think of his the phenomenal plays he makes with his arm and running around and just doing what he does. But the foundation of that, Zach, is he's prepared. He knows how to manage the game. He understands down and distance, his pre-snaps, all that stuff he's got on lockdown. So you got to find a guy that has all that uh, juice and the and athletically and it's all together as a quarterback plus that between the years stuff and that's no mean feat that ain't easy to find and you're not going to find a game changer on the open market you know again that's why Sam Darnold is not going to be that guy and I hate to keep name dropping him but that's the one that keeps being linked to the Broncos all the game changers have been drafted by their team so that's where the Broncos that's the uh, the, the formula of the Broncos to try to copy Chad. Draft time number two tonight as well. Thank you, Thank big you. dog. Says I know Zach getting a uh, I know Zach getting a big fan. What about trading for Hayden Hooker? 
uh, he would have been one of the top three quarterbacks in last year's draft class if he didn't tear his ACL. Uh, 58 touchdowns to five interceptions. Zach. I'll give you some context. We were talking about this, Scott and I were, about the possibility of Hendon Hooker, um, the Broncos trading for him because he had some first-round buzz before he got hurt. And I'm not a huge fan of it, you know, just with the injury history. And I don't know. I, I prefer one of the, the prospects in this year's class. Scott and I were talking about it a little bit off camera last night, and he kind of, you know, he, he made a good argument, but I would just touch someone that wasn't tainted, so to speak, and – that's why I prefer McCarthy. If if the playing field was level, I'm taking McCarthy over a hooker. Right. The Tennessee. Not, kid. Not right. I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Um currently with the Detroit Lions third round pick. Yeah, interesting prospect. Um as Scott pointed out though, he's already 26. I, I couldn't believe that. So that's kind of a non starter for me. Sam Bam. Thank you, bro. Number two tonight as well. That's three. Super chat Thank superstars you know. who have thrown down twice tonight. We are very lucky. We're grateful. Thank you, Sam. He says, how much draft capital would you not give up uh, to trade up if Sean Payton and George Payton feel very confident in their QB? What's the draft capital limit that you would not give Ooh. up to move to like pick four through eight to get the QB? That's a, see to me, I'm, I'm kind of the wrong guy to ask this question because I am of the opinion that if you don't have a quarterback, you're dead in the water. Like all those picks will not avail you anyway if you don't have your guy. So if you're confident you have your guy, then what wouldn't you give up is is right. I mean, not not in the in the sense that he's talking about it. Like to me it's like I mean, I guess there's got to be some realm of reason, some line zack of demarcation, the no go beyond this point if there is what is it to you well Sam I'm going to answer a question with a question who's the quarterback in question here are they moving up from to four because Drake may fell and slipped and the Broncos could could swoop in in that case I there's nothing I wouldn't give up PS2 included if Sean Payton does sign off but if we're talking about Bo Nix or even McCarthy who I like a lot I I wouldn't sell the farm it's, it's It all depends on the quarterback. It all depends on how the board breaks. But I'm not giving up two first-round picks and or PS2 to, to go get J.J. McCarthy. Drake May, Jaden Daniels, different story. Right. Yeah, there is there is that thread of, of logic that has to be part of the calculus. Um, I would – so I would – you know, four to eight, It again, it, it, like Zach said, it sounds like too much of a cop-out or qualifier, but it's like, well, who's who's still on the board? You know, who can you take? But um, if you were to say one to three to get into one to three, maybe it would be a, a different answer. But um, I'm, I'm of that opinion, man. Do basically whatever it takes to get your guy and then let the chips fall. Let the chips fall because you're dead in the water without him anyway. I mean, we saw that, guys. We saw that. We get so caught up in like, oh, you know, we got to have the picks, this and that. And for for justified reasons, I mean – We've lived through the last two years of the Broncos being deprived of their premium round picks uh, through the various trades and whatnot. I get me 16 through the present does not testify and scream from the rafters that all the Von Millers, all the Chris Harris Jr.'s, Aqib Tlaib's, Justin Simmons's, you know, Cortland Sutton's in his prime. They avail you not if you don't have the quarterback. So what good does it do you to have, oh, well, Hey, you know what? That's too rich for our blood. We're going to stay at pick 12 and draft the next Von Miller. Even if you drafted the next Von Miller, how is that actually helping you in this? What's it? How's it translating in the standings? My answer to you would be very little, very little, very little. You got to get that quarterback first. It's the number one foundational position. You got to get it first. Taylor, bro, so good to see you. Thanks for the super chat. Uh, so consistent. I've missed you. Hope you're doing well. Um, I don't know what this means, Zach. You want to read this? I need your syntax. Does this say tobacco with an OBJ emoji next to it? I can't. I don't know what he's trying to say there, Taylor. But he goes, tobacco's finally over with now. We can move on from Russ, and we can look towards the future in the draft. Draft McCarthy. Don't trade up. Yeah, it's it's been interesting uh, in the very small amount of time that I have been back. And, uh, you know, back to reading the comments on, on our social media, um, on the website, what you guys are saying here. 
J.J. McCarthy has come a long way in the Broncos, that guy, since I left yeah. that. Big time. Yeah, I'm ta- he's being talked about like a top eight, top ten pick, and obviously out of the Broncos range. But if they love him enough, Chad, do not be surprised, Broncos country, if Peyton trades up and gets aggressive to land him. Mike, so good to see you, big dog. Another foundational member of our community and a bona fide super chat superstar. Thank you, buddy. He says, hey, Chad, Zach, and Broncos country, as far as cutting players to make cap room, is that really a huge loss? We have very few impact players. Welcome back, Chad. Thank you, bud. Go MHH. Um, Well, I mean, the guys, here's the thing. The guys that are in the conversation for that, you know, cap casualty, they're the highest paid guys on your team for a reason, more often than not. Um, Garrett Bowles, you can cut him. Cool. What's your answer at left tackle? Like, what are you going to do? Justin Simmons, you know, it's not. If you cut Justin Simmons, um, you know, his impact, Zach, isn't just what he produces in terms of his stats and this and that, but you get the intangible stuff, the leadership, making sure everybody's in their spot pre-snap, like all that is valuable. I would, I would maybe pick a little bit of a bone in what you're saying here, Mike, in that I don't, I don't subscribe to the idea that we have very few, like there are impact players. Dude, Garrett Bowles is an impact player. Uh, Justin Simmons is an impact player. We know Patrick Sertan is an impact player. Cortland Sutton as well. We have impact players on this roster, um, but some of those guys you might, Zach, have to kind of figure out ways to live without them in order to get under the cap. And, you know, that's just the reality of their situation right now. One brain as usual, brother, because I was going to say the exact same thing. It's not really that huge of a loss. It just makes more work for the Broncos. Those are positions that you'd have to fill. So like Chad was talking about, if you trade or cut Garrett Bowles, I mean, it could be a net improvement in the future, but you're, it's still another position the Broncos are going to have to fill. And then you're also losing the locker room stuff, the intangibles that Chad talked about. If you're cutting a Tim Patrick, you're losing a really good glue guy that you have in the locker room, and they're pretty hard to find. So that's, I think, where the impact stems from, Mike. Um, okay, we are at uh, 57 minutes, so we got to kind of rapid fire here. Shout out to uh, Albert, by the way. I see the Mile High Dutchie in the chat tonight. Good to see you. Taylor, with his second super, joining the club, MHH for Life, go Broncos. Thank you, big dog. Um, We also have Phil jumping in again on Facebook to say, I don't want another retread, but if that happens, I still want a quarterback somewhere in the draft, uh, in this draft. Yeah, that's a situation where you might be able, Zach, to have your cake and eat it too, you know, depending on um, the sitch. But again, the Broncos aren't really in a position, at least as it stands right now, to go out and throw money at a guy who ostensibly may be able to make a, you know, an immediate impact at quarterback, like a uh, Baker Mayfield, like a, uh, you know, Kirk cousins or a guy like that. You don't have the money to do that until you start seriously, uh, surgically making some changes to your salary cap situation in the roster. Um, it all screams quarterback Naj jumping in again, bro. Thank you. Naj. Love you. Big dog. He says, bros, we haven't hit on a quarterback in the draft since Tim Tebow, and that was some miraculous karma. I think it's paramount we fix that run defense. I can barely tolerate bottom-tier offense, but seeing our D get pushed around like a JV squad is brutal. Yeah, and I think a big, uh, you know, a couple of nice decisions that on the defensive line can really turn that particular ship around. Um, but, yeah, it, it has such a cascading effect on a team when you can't stop the run, you know, it's not just on the defense itself and all that, but like it's, if your defense can't get off the field because you can't uh, limit teams to, you know, two yards on first down three yards on uh, or two yards on second. down. If you're, if your opponents Zach are always at, you know, third and one third and two, or like not getting too many third downs because they're just running, running it down your throat. It really does. Um, pop its head up in a lot of different ways in terms of how it affects your overall product on the field. What's JV backward? That would be VJ. Not saying I'm just saying, but yeah, no, you're absolutely right here. And this is why I don't want a cornerback. If they don't get a cue in the first round, you got to address the front seven. You have holes everywhere, inside linebacker, outside linebacker, DN, nose tackle, you name it. They need help there. And everyone talks about the Miami game skewing the numbers, but the Broncos were bad all year. And that's typical VJ schematical 
defensive performances. They need bodies up front, some hogs and some dogs in that mix. Amen. But guys, what a great conversation. Naj, love you, big dog. Hope you're doing well. The Rock says ESPN uh, reporter Chris Mortensen passed away at the age yeah, of 72. Sucks. Yeah. Uh, Chad and Zach, your, memory, uh, your memories of his work. I mean, as long as I have followed the NFL, you know, since I was seven, eight years old, that dude's been a part of the experience of staying, you know, on top of, of the team and whatnot. Like, um, I'm not, I can't give you like a specific key memory of, of Mortensen other than just like, he's always been there. You know, he's always been there one form or another on uh television. Uh, so definitely a bummer 72, you too know, young. he's he's not like young, young, but that just seems too, too young, too young. So thoughts and prayers, RIP to, to the great Chris Mortensen. Yeah, I'm only 34, so I, my memories only go back a, a certain amount. But he was like the Adam Schefter in the pre-Twitter era. I mean, Mort Report was nails. Yep. When he said something, that's what happened. So he was a great reporter, seemed like even a better person. And uh, it sucks. I, I feel bad for his family and his, uh, and his friends. Well put. We got Troy <clears throat> jumping in from the tippity top rope at the 11th hour, right as we're so about to sure. sign off here uh, with a very, very, very generous super chat. My dog, thank you, Troy. Uh, what a what a great way to uh, w- with you and everybody else in the chat tonight. Be welcome back onto the podcast. Love you so much. Seriously, I, I don't just say that. I hope you guys. I think you know that I really mean that. I think you know that. But Troy, you demand. He says, "Welcome back." I will listen later. Uh, I hope some QB chips fall with various teams so that we have a better view of what we're dealing with in the draft. And I hope we can trade back, fill some hole, and uh, get someone Sean, uh, Sean Payton loves. Not sure who that is. Thank you. Yeah, Troy, it's true, man. Whenever you're listening to this, that uh, you know the board will get kind of relative to the draft. The board will kind of get re- reshaped a little bit <clears throat> when free agency rolls around. There will be. You you can count on it. One or two of the teams that are kind of comp- competing with Denver in the quarterback hunt in the draft that are ahead of them, one or two of those teams will sign a guy that will convince them to go, eh, you know, we're going to take a tackle or we're going to whatever. And that makes, you know, drops it even farther for them. That will happen. Uh, we just can't say for sure yet who and how how it will shake out. But thank you, Troy. Love you, big dog. Yeah, thank you, Troy. And I do think one quarterback will fall to Denver at 12. I just don't think – I don't know if it's going to be the quarterback they want. And if it's not, and if plan B is on the board, let's say Bo Nix is plan B, if they move back a few spots, pick up a second-round pick, and so get Bo Nix, that would be a pretty ideal scenario. So I'm, I'm right there with you, Troy. Thank you, Ronk. Appreciate you, my friend. Like I said, missed you, and uh, hope you're doing well. But we're out of time. Before we dip, though, as always, we got a few messages for you. That was a tremendous, I can't believe over an hour long episode already of the MHH podcast. If you're not doing so, please follow us on Twitter at the MHH pod. You can follow the main account on Twitter at mile high huddle, Chad at Chad and Jensen, myself at Kelberman NFL and Scott, our producer at scout Kennedy. If you guys want some merch, like we're rocking each and every podcast, get yours at MHHmerch.com. Also, drop us a like at facebook.com slash mile high huddle pod. You can find us on Instagram at mile underscore high underscore huddle. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure you're leaving your football priest and our Deacon Scott a five star review for a chance to win some of that merch each and every single month. But if anything, y'all, please subscribe, like, and share this video and every video you see on the MHH channel. It really helps us grow and reach more Broncos fans. That's right, you guessed it. Just like you. Much love and respect to the great Super Chat superstars and supporters tonight, helping us not only keep the conversation going, which is crucial, but supporting what we do here at MHH. Myself, Zach, Scott, all the guys. So thank you to David, uh, Yunkin, David McElrath, the Papa Bear, Sam Bam, Kathy, The Ronk, George Fox, Draft Time, Howie, uh, Ronnie, Keisho Guki. Uh, of course, Naj, legendary mythical figure. Uh, Phil, Noah, Lawrence, RD, the GLP, um, the Jersey guy. Like he, the GLP is like, I don't know, Zach, if I'm going to go try my luck at like roulette, you know, I'm in the casino. I'm making sure I got Gary with me. Right. I want a little bit of that, that juju. Uh, James Edwards, uh, 
let's see. Taylor, Mike Edel, of course, The Ronk, and of course, last but certainly not least, Troy Boer. Much love and respect, guys. I really have missed you. Um, can't wait till Thursday. In the meantime, I'm going to be getting back up to speed on all the latest on the Broncos and in the draft rumors and all that stuff. So uh, Thursday, I'll be looking forward to it. It's going to be a gas. Have a great start to your week, y'all. We'll see you Thursday night. Take care, and as always, go Broncos.